sings all praise the King, truly. Today we speak about storytelling. So Babylon is the master of They are presenting their narrative, which is a particular viewpoint that benefits them. That would be those that have most all the wealth or use the structure of the nation states to gain and contain the wealth on the planet and in the process have destroyed of this earth. These are uh, manufactured histories that man, as they tell their tale, uh, records this, and then this becomes what is presented in historical documents in the future. This is nothing new. These so-called founding fathers of the United States were involved in telling tales. Uh, the one, Benjamin Franklin, uh, was a publisher. And th these publications become that which so-called goes down in history. Today you have different sources of information. And many of these sources have archives where you can review what the source has discussed in the past time periods. What they will do is edit so as to cut out any information they deem as not benefiting them. And it will obviously keep the information that benefits them. You see this in the community, so-called community-based outlets, communication outlets, um, that pretend to be inclusive to take people's views in from around the community. Well, they have a select few insiders that project most of those views. The outsiders are mostly included if they ride the wave. However, if they come from a new perspective, which does not benefit those that don't uh, the, the major donors and supporters, including the state, whatever that is, they are um, cut out. And so, essentially, what the Babylon is doing is a form of wizardry. Uh, we spoke about this as witchcraft. Either way, it's a deceptive practice. They would try to make you believe that it's not wizardry because man is behind the scenes. <clears throat> so there is no doubt that they are in the business of selling lies and big ones. It's a form of eradication of the truth. That not necessarily does a lie come directly, yet it also could be indirect, whereas no particular falsehood is told, yet truths or facts or important information is discarded. Also, the language that's used oftentimes they will present an issue using particular language whether it be in the questions they use or in the statements that will feed people uh, perception. 
sometimes they speak about uh, people as being leaders of companies or nations. And you know that these people aren't really calling the shots. They're simply faces. Thesis. That often are meant to relate to the public at large as a means to draw people in to contain people's attention. That's what they are. They are very needy. The feces, again, depending on the issues being covered, will change. Depending on the position or the perception of position of the person, the feces will change because it is an effort to rope people into the herd. This is the convergency process that has been discussed on the Ross Rebirth account. The key word is con. They are distorting the issues by using the particular language to make these perceptions. Obviously, there's no real inclusion that they're not actually looking to maximize the that is what others think or feel about a particular issue. Uh, they're simply attempting to make the appearance that their conclusions are representing the majority. And those that disagree to them are labeled heretics. Obviously, their tails are both short and long. They have these feces that become these perpetual models. You see them on the horns those. We're told about them, these oldies, these books. The writing, the publishing of books is also part of this process does not mean that every author is, is part of the process. You know, but the funding through the institutions is like such that the incentive is provided uh, for certain individuals to write about certain topics in certain ways. And this is done through various institutions, universities, also, various agencies, if a person works for the FBI, they may have a package that will send them off, you know, for retirement, retirement, and they will uh, proceed to promote uh, that field. Uh, sometimes the promotion is not so obvious. Um, you know, an example would have been the promotion of the lie that the uh, SEALs got Bin Laden, the uh, United States uh, Navy SEALs had a uh, special team force, had uh, killed Bin Laden, the number one uh, fugitive in the world, the guy with all the information. And so, the lie is two-tongued. It's meant to reach two classes of individuals or two thoughts and philosophy, perhaps. Whereas some people wouldn't believe uh, the story because they know 
that doesn't make any sense, uh, they are the ones that may have some experience within that unit, of, within those organizations, such as the military. Uh, they basically get it, uh, but they are sworn to secrecy. The other individuals don't really know, and then as a result, uh, it tends to sell the story, which is that Bin Laden was caught. And so, and when they have two people that write a book that's conflicting on the issue, it seems as if it would be a problem. However, uh, it it. It, 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 is, it is a form of uh, deception uh, that psychologically uh, convinces people the story is real because otherwise why would two people uh, be disagreeing about how it went down? You don't have to read these books to kind of know what angle they're coming from. And it's an angle. You know? They have mastered this craft. As long as you're looking from their angle, you're looking into their scope. And you're going to see what they show you. Often claims are made to contradict the truth from a historical perspective. For example, Holy Scriptures contain the stories of the ancient Hebrews. These stories are powerful. They hold an authority. And so, because the story of the Hebrews does not fit the agenda of the capitalist. capitalists, then the capitalists will attempt to project their own story from a historical perspective. We say capital in the sense of man worshiping himself because the Christ is said to give unto Caesar what is his. And this was An attack on that capital way of thought. The capitalist is about himself, his name. And so even like in this country when you look at the graffiti, people are painting their names because it's a form of capitalist graffiti. In other countries people use spray paint to protest, which would only make sense. But the way that they've told their stories and projected their images has convinced people that somehow promoting themselves is, is going to benefit them. The timing of the issues that are projected uh, when the communication channels know that there's more people listening, they will project a different story than when they know there's less people listening. Or perhaps they know what types of people are listening. Does that mean that they're going to tell less of an important detail because there's less people listening? You would think so. However, that's way, way, way off. Um, most of the important information is given out at certain particular times um, to certain particular people. That there's no interest in those that dominate the populations through their rule to inform the populations of how it works. So, 
this, there's a, for example, a peak hour time where communication channels know there's more people listening. They know the demographics. Uh, perhaps they know, the, by and large, they have working class individuals listening at certain times. Other individuals are so-called professionals. They're listening at other times. The professionals form the barricade that protects these ruling presses. And so it's vital for them to get particular information. And most of that information is better than what those at the bottom see. It's typically more concise. It's typically presented in a clearer form. It enables the person to make a judgment. You know, because those forming that barricade have been more educated. They've basically spent more time reading. And so they can make decisions for themselves. So the information is given to them, which gives them that feeling of superiority and the independency, I should say, independence. Um, many of the people in poverty are more uh, taken or intrigued with images. If you notice today, people are on their computers, you go to a library or something, and you, you, know, you glance at someone, they staring at images, they scrolling up and down the page. One image after the other, one image after the other. I'm um, just like, they're f uh, just anything else, it seems too, like too much work, I suppose. So, looking at pictures is, is more you know, fun. Um, unfortunately, for most of us, we're all subject to those around us that we reap what others sow. And so when we have a kind of zombie-like culture, um, we're going to get zombie-like results. You know, some of the, the most important issues are just not even addressed. Because if the public's not aware, then it's best that some of these issues stay secret so that those oppressors have the advantage. Once the public becomes aware, that's when the information comes out. They gauge you know, the public's intelligence and determine that there's information or there's something that people are figuring out on their own. Once people uh, make their own judgments, um, it's dangerous for the communication channel because they lose their power in the form of uh, their feeding power. And so, it's necessary now for them to step up and provide the information to beat others to the chase. about counter narratives. You know, if people don't know, they won't know until they know. Babylon sees what information or what's being talked about that's a threat to them. It takes power away from them and their ways of witchcraft. They then provide information that counters. You know, sometimes they call it a rebuttal, but they're attempting to get a person to change their mind or their viewpoint. Some of the ways this is done is by projecting the information, you know, whether it be a theory, uh, 
or even you know a fact uh, yet they're doing so from their angle yeah. and sometimes this is a falsehood so for example if you have um, a situation like 9-11 To counter, you know, what others are saying, you've got to project your own story that seems to ride that thought, train of thought, which would be that something ain't right. We're not being told the whole thing. Once you gain people's attention, you take them in an entirely different direction. Even if they end up thinking, yeah, something ain't right, uh, they still feel like, well, it had to be for a reason. That's just one example. You see now, there's satellites, drones, uh, people just, it's like an open prison, at least here in the United States of America. I know that supposedly other people from other nations like in Europe, if they have citizenship to the United States, or even if they travel to the United States, they're given certain rights to protect their data, but people here in the United States aren't given these rights. If you use any of those devices, the information you take by the third party, whoever owns either the phone or the service provider, for example, sounds like maybe not so much like freedom, so like, to counter anybody thinking like, wait a minute, why do I deserve to be watched all the time and how come I can't watch the people that are watching me? Because obviously, you know, that's gonna provide advantages for people. Duh. So to counter this, they're going to you know, put this kind of fear-mongering approach. Let's, for example, Oh, we're all being watched. There's aliens in the sky. They're watching us. They're coming down. They're sending these robots. They're going to be killers. And so they, they turn people away. Yeah. Um, basically, they're biting the backs of others. They're conscious killers. And they're not... These folks that rule and contain and control most of the wealth planet and destroy the earth process are hoping that you don't think for yourself. And so they're finding the people that are willing to do something and what it is that they're concluding. Then they're taking those conclusions and they're twisting them up, make a pretzel look straight and presenting them in this fashion and form that either turns people away or draws people to thinking a certain different way about it, for example. You see this in this, this new uh, phenomenon, not so new, fake news. Uh, you got this flooding of content. People are obsessed with clicking these boxes and takes them somewhere it tells them all this garbage eventually they say you know and they might even go out and embarrass themselves telling other people what they read other people wait a minute that's not true ah they look into it ah so like they're gonna turn away so I'm not paying attention to that I'm gonna go to those so-called reputable sources that were always there. It's the same reputable sources that are putting out the bad information. They're going to not do it through their organization, they'll do it indirectly. But the information being put out, who knows, the Pentagon might be putting out the fake news. They're blaming Russia. Russia's probably blaming them. Remember, the beast has two horns. And the Chinese, you know. And so, 
they're turning people away uh, from anyone that may be attempting to explain what is going on. In this way, they're boosting their own trustworthiness. They continue to profess that there is progress, progress for all, even the ones that had to suffer and perish on this earth because of that man's sin. It's progress for them, through the grandkids. The, the life expectancy is growing. Just hang on. And like, how is this life expectancy increasing? First of all, it's not. It's not. The other thing is that they're not averaging abortions. In the past, all the children, uh, the babies uh, that were not, uh, that did not survive, uh, were included in this life expectancy rate. Today it's not so. When they do averages, they're going to average everyone. So those that have the wealth are, have the ability to afford the health care, which prolongs their life, and then in, increases that average. Doesn't mean the people on the bottom lived any longer. Or it doesn't mean the people overall lived any longer. Just a few people. So <laughs> if you have one person who you know, thinks he can figure it all out, be higher than even the most I, they, you know, maybe they keep getting more body parts put in them. They're living long, even forever, because you know how these men say now, we're going to live forever, the witchcraft, the wizards. And so if that averages, then it would be like, wow, but it could be everyone else is, is only living five years. You got one person to live forever, then the life expectancy is, sells itself. This is part of the indirect lies. How is it that this piece of information is being presented? What do the numbers really reflect? In the end, they seek to make their problem ours. That's what they seek.